Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and we're back with City Skylines and our challenge to reach a population of 100,000. Now before we get started we've got to announce our winners from the competition from our previous episode and I'm just going to pass you on to little James to announce the winners. Okay, so as a fair randomizer um, for the winner, I'm going to pass you on to my son who's just having a look through the comments now and based on nothing other than the fact that you've just had a quick look through, you don't know who's regular, who's not, do you? So you're going to pick out three winners for me from all of these comments here. So, winner number one will be Brentle. Brentle. Brantle. And that's that's because he's got a toadstool as <laughs> an avatar. I'm just butchering their names. I've known that is actually I know Brantle, he's he's a, he's a regular here. Okay, Brantle, you're a winner, my man. Um anyone who typed win within a thing is Exotic a... Dioras. Exotic Dioras, okay. And the last one will be Omar because he did a really nice comment. Omar. Yeah, that was a nice comment. I've had some great comments. All right, thank you very much for helping me out with that. And I will get all of these copies out to everybody ASAP. And there you have it. Congratulations to our free winners. If you are able to join my Discord and message me there, I can just pass you the Steam keys that way. Or alternatively, you could message me on Twitter. But failing that, you can always do it the old-fashioned way. And just email me at jamescompletegames at gmail.com and I'll send you the Steam key via that method. But if at all possible, just message me on Discord is the easiest way. I'm quite active, and if you're not on there already, well, you're welcome to stay. And as well as City Skylines, I have a key as well for you guys for the Deep Focus Radio DLC, which is actually what we're listening to right now. And there's a good selection of tracks on here. In fact, some of them, I think, sound very much like Vangelis, and you get that Blade Runner type feel in your city, especially at night time when you put the night lights on. But this is a very relaxed, chilled out game, just what's needed for this time. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, let's continue. Now firstly I want to address these roads up here and I rather stupidly forgot to join them. And because of that, this has sent a lot of traffic through our residential estate because the only way to get back out of our city was to do a full circle and come through the industrial zone going over that bridge in order to exit. So now they can just go to the top of that road and turn round. It should be a lot easier. Or well, they can turn round via the roundabout. Notice we've got a Jusons and a couple of assets there that I didn't realise I had installed. Today I want to focus on an industry, but we need to get our city a bit bigger and our population a little bit bigger. But let's address the power situation. I'm just going to plop it down here on the outside of this industrial zone. Not only because it makes noise and it's polluting, but it's right next to the highway. And we will be relying on a delivery of coal for this power plant. So basically, it's the first building off the highway. And we can actually adjust our budget now. We're going to put that down to uh, half of what it was. And that power plant will certainly keep us going for a little bit longer. So we are unable to focus on an industry specialization at the moment. And that looks like I've got a Travid Perkins in here as well. So I've definitely got a couple of assets loaded in from the British pack, but I've got one of those around the corner actually from me. That's one of the things with the Steam Workshop. You can install quite a lot, but my intention was to run this largely unmodded and uh, I didn't intentionally put them in there, but they must have just slipped through. Okay. So let me have a think here. Well, we're going to need to unlock our next milestone and unlock another square. Before we can do that, we're going to need to uh, double our population. So I'm going to think about building some roads off of this roundabout and behind this, these shops here and then continuing another estate. So let's have a go at doing that.
Okay, so I think I'm about ready with the roads. And I'm just going to stretch the commercial up a little bit further here. Again, I've used some dirt track roads to save the money. And I've kind of run them parallel to the opposite roads here. So it does look a little bit square at the moment, but that will all change. Now, this area in the middle is largely going to be high density residential eventually but for now we can't use high density stuff so I'm just gonna put a little pathway in here and the reason I want to put it in there is as you can see there's a little crossing we've got an intersection there so people can just walk across so it's a good place to put a pathway and I think I've already put one of those pathways a little bit further up this road anticipating that as well so they get to the end of that junction just like here and it's just a way that they can cut through we don't want to stop the traffic with lots and lots of junctions I've only got two sets of lights around here so that should keep things moving but we do need to bear in mind that this city is going to get a lot bigger now I need to put a little bit more industrial in but I'm hoping to be able to expand onto that area there as you can see I've bought the highway round as well this is where I'm going to intend to bring it but again that's just a guide so I don't forget but this section in the middle here I'm going to make deliberately high density residential so we've got an actual skyline and some high-rise buildings just near to our coastline yeah we can't unlock those yet so we just need to let our city build up but just planning ahead uh, I think we can get some more commercial coming down this avenue. I haven't put a gap in between, so I need to make sure that everything is actually facing the road and not the other way around. Okay, so this is just a little asset I got off the workshop, but I do like to have some parking spaces around, as there naturally would be. So there's a little parking lot there. Okay, fantastic. We've just hit Boomtown and now we've unlocked the ability to lay down trains, our ore industry, specialization, new roads and highways. And we can also purchase another tile, which I'm going to do straight away. So let's just come out to our world map. So anyone who's thinking that we've just got this one square to build on, we don't. In fact, I think unmodded, we've got a total of nine squares that we can do. It is possible with mods to actually do all 81 squares, but we won't be doing that. We're going to continue up that avenue up all the way up here somehow, but looks like we've unlocked our connection to the railway. So now we've got an outline connection. We could put some trains in, but it is a little bit early to be thinking about opening up a train line. Now, I suspect there's ore over here let's have a look there we go okay so it is ore i thought it would be because of all the rocks around it but it could have been oil but it looks like we've got a little bit of ore just to concentrate on around the back and there's some oil at the back there but we're going to draw in a new industrial zone all around this corner here and this is going to allow us to do something from the industries dlc pack now if you don't have this you can use the generic industry of course but this is just a another way to diverse the industry a bit i do like the farmlands the ore industry is not one that i've actually used too much so this resource being here i think we're just going to need to plan out some roads now i think i want a road going over the top of that mountain and we're going to have to place down our main building in order to unlock some other stuff so I just want to think about planning out a road so again as always I use the dirt track roads just to do this at start before we get money where it doesn't matter and I don't like to do my bends too sharp so I get them to 90 degrees I want this road laying along this path in a way because we're going to have mines going into the back of this mountain here this is where all the ore is I think I might have just come in a little bit close here and this might cause it to yeah 
one of the things I may have to do here is just play around with the terrain tool and flatten some of this area out. Yeah, I'm going to try that again and send out a bend and perhaps do a little bit of terraforming as well. So let's do that. Okay, so I've laid down my roads. It did take me a little while to do that actually, just working with the curves of the mountain. And now we need to place our main building down. So I'm just gonna actually place it next to this little old ruined castle here. I think it'll look quite nice up here. And that's unlocked a few things that we can build. So this works kind of like the park DLC, the industries DLC. Yeah, I like that. Got right next to old ruin. Fantastic. So we've unlocked mines, I think it was a sand pile and an ore grinding facility. And we need to level up our industries in order to unlock more stuff. So I'm just going to take out this big loan in order to do this because we're going to place quite a few buildings down here. So start with a small ore mine. And I think I want two of these right off the bat so we're gathering quite a bit of ore. And let's see, just on the edge of this road here. And I want another one. But I think I want to put the grinding mill in between it. Yes, the ore grinding mill. If we just stick that here, and then another mine next to it. So, in fact, we've got two small mines there feeding that grinding mill in the middle. And that will produce metal. I'd be able to just level the terrain here a little bit, but I don't mind that's actually how the mine would look, how it cuts into the side of the mountain there. So this is going to generate a little bit of money, or it will eventually will generate quite a lot of money for us. And as we get more workers and as it levels up, we can unlock more industry buildings. Okay, so we've got the sand storage. And I think we just shove this opposite our mines. As that doesn't need to be sat next to the mine, that's just a storage facility. And let's connect it all up with water. So we're going to have to allow the mines to work for a little bit of time and hopefully if they're working well we'll be able to unlock some more ore industry buildings and produce other materials. I know there's a car factory in this game eventually. I've never actually built the car factory. But we could stick a, I don't know, a Tesla factory down or something like that. It'd be quite cool. There we go, I've just clipped it just onto the road. The electricity juice usually comes just past the road, so sometimes you can connect a pylon just next to it and it will tap in. I know I got a comment about laying down the power next to the school in the last video and I just luckily managed to place it right next to the power and it's sort of connected, but many of these pylons do get deleted as the city grows. These ones sat up on the hill though may not. And there we go. So we've got a little flashing note there saying that they've got no materials to produce, but that will go away. Okay, so we're starting to get a problem with not enough educated workers. So this building has leveled up, but it hasn't got enough workers. So it will be going out of business if we don't address this situation. Things are leveling up quite quickly and the buildings are getting bigger. So. Just on this avenue here at the top, I've had to put a church down because we've starting to have a few people die as time moves on. So you need to put a cemetery down. But now I'm going to put a high school in because we haven't got one. 
and I think it'll look great just up next to this church, which is what I was just doing before. And I think... And there we go, there's a football field as well. Any high school needs a football field to play on. I'm just going to move it over a tad this way. And I think by doing that I've changed the pitch to be orange. Never mind. We'll just imagine that it's AstroTurf. Um, but this building is an asset from the Steam Workshop and it acts like a park. But I really think that every single high school should have a football field. And this will help bring a little bit of value to the area as well. So I'm going to bring this path out just here. So we're going to get a line of houses going around the back. And I think I'll just have to detail some fence in and around this school. So let's draw a little bit of residential in here. And I think I need to put a fence and some detail in here. Okay, where is it? Uh, park. Park fence. That will work. Just perfect, I think. Let's just draw a barrier around it. Because otherwise I think the school looks a little bit strange just sat there on itself. It's these little details that help bring everything to life. So let's get a few happy little trees down, as Bob Ross would say, just around here. And there we go, we'll put a few up in that corner there. So there you go, the kids have got somewhere to go and hide if they want to go for a cigarette or vape, as they do now. I don't know. Hey, maybe it's actually untrendy to smoke now, but I don't know, back in my day, maybe at high school, it was around the back of the bike sheds and just at the back of the trees there. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that looks a lot better with the football field on now. And I can really get lost sometimes detailing these cities. So some of it I'll do off camera and just do a little bit now on camera. I feel that that's just made the high school jump out so much more as a building. Fantastic. And we could perhaps do with a pathway as well, going between the church coming down from the residential area. I like the little football field there. I don't know if we actually have any games on there because it's not from the expansion pack itself. That's just a little asset. Yep. I'm going to put a line of commercial in here. We'll see which way it ends up facing. I'll go with four square, but sometimes the commercial buildings face towards the residential zone, and I don't want them to do that. I'm just finishing off Hemlock Gardens and our little park that we put in the previous episode decided to put a nice bush around the outside of the park a few little trees in the middle and I've just put a nice cafe and some facilities down on this park so you can sort of imagine our residents taking the dog for a walk down here seems like a nice place just next to the beach and just to mirror the other side I'm going to put some of these little bushes in just like we did on the pathway opposite I'm liking this. It's actually taking me quite a while just to do some detail in here, so I have to do it off camera. But let's get a nice shot of that. Ah, there we have it. It's looking nice with them trees there. And there you have it. That's about all the time we've got for that episode of Complete City Skylines. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and enjoying the content. And on the next episode, I'm sure we're going to be expanding our city further. I really do want to delve deep into the Sunset Harbour DLC on this particular city and I do eventually plan to have a wide fishing industry and I want to experiment with some of that new content but it takes a little bit of time to build up these cities. 
but we're in no rush to get there. We need to get our city a little bit more populated. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.